Welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. Uh, my name is I.K. Grande. I'm your host. And if you've watched porn in the past 12 years, I've definitely helped you get off. Uh, today, my wow. guest, my guest is Big Dipper or The Big Dipper? Which one? Do What's it say right there? Oh well, yeah. This is this is fun. So you have a there's way- no the. Do you say the Lil Wayne? No. Okay. So big dip answer. So to now your uh, I have your Wikipedia page in front of me, which I did not know existed. <laughs> Truly and honestly, did yeah. Not so know. I figured it'd be fun um, because there's a lot of questions. You're you're actually my first guest that I have not met yet, but I've seen videos of online. Okay, and. I got to tell you, I had, I had a great time. I showed these guys the videos. I think that you are very sex positive and body positive, and I enjoyed which one? Um, looking. Uh huh. That's awesome. Like yeah. the whole choreograph and everything was really, really fun. Thank you. No problem. So, yeah, so that made it more. That's why I kept like tweeting you or messaging you. I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I really want to get him on the show. That'll be a lot of fun yeah. to talk to you. And also talk about, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you're a porn connoisseur as well. Uh, I don't know connoisseur. I go through phases. Okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So we'll like, I looked at that. porn a lot when I was a kid, and then I got into like a big like in my adult life got into like a big like fuck buddy rotation. Okay. And I was like, I never want to come alone, and so I would never look at porn. I would just fuck people. Okay. Right. And then you know, then it sort of like comes and goes. Yeah. And now, I mean, I know so many people in the industry, it's sort of like dodging when you're on the website. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I don't want to jerk off to my friend. Yeah. Or I do. You oh, know, depending. Wow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, so here, your your Wikipedia says um, you were raised in uh, Evanston, Illinois. Correct. All right. To a mother who is Jewish and a father who is Christian. Whoa. Right. Correct. <laughs> I can't believe that's a they got, yeah, they got very detailed. Okay. Uh, you were raised in a Jewish household and attended Sunday school at a reformed <laughs> synagogue. Yeah. Yeah. Begin. Oh, I know where this is coming from. I did. A friend of mine is a writer for okay. like a uh, like a Jewish focused magazine called Tablet. Okay. And so I was reaching out to a bunch of people when I was releasing my album last mm-hmm. summer, and I was like, "Hey, like anyone have any press ideas?" And he was like, "I can do an article about you." But it has to be Jewish focused. Okay. So we like went into great detail about my upbringing. Yeah. Which is funny that that made it. Yeah. To well, yeah, it's here. Okay. Uh, talks about you starting to perform at the age of eight in children's theater productions. Correct. Wizard, of, Wizard of Oz yes. being one of the, the highlighted one. Okay. Um, several okay. instruments. So you play the cello, the piano, the trumpet, <laughs> the tuba. All drums. used to. Yeah. And quit every single one of them. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, that's impressive, though. Cello's not easy. I quit after literally. Really two weeks. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's a- so this was taken out of time. I was like telling some like um, sort of story about oh, and I quit cello. I quit the piano. Okay. I quit the but I took I played all of them. I see. All right. Uh, began listening to hip hop and rap at the age of nine. Uh huh. I love this is my favorite part. It's it's adorable. Had your bar mitzvah at the eighth grade and confirmed in the tenth grade having taken more Jewish studies classes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> this is so funny that when you look me up, that all of that comes up. Well, yeah, it's your early life in education. This yeah. is legit. Like you have, like it's all broken down. It's in a brand way. new because I honestly like, I think like uh, a year or two okay. after I started, like in like 2014, I was like, oh, I wonder if there's going to be a Wikipedia page about me, and I yeah. looked, and there was never was. Mm-hmm. And I would see my name referenced when, like, you know, there are Wikipedia pages on, like, <laughs> queer yeah. performers or gay rappers. And I would see my name in there, but it was never a hyper Yeah, I hated that. I hate when I see that. But I was, like, I told myself, I was, like, I'm not going to write my own. Mm-hmm. I'll never write my own Wikipedia yeah. page. Yeah, I've met people that do that. That's not cool. Yeah. I like it. I like it. So um, you graduated from Ithaca College in 2007, right? Yes. And then... As far as uh, your career for at the moment, you wrote your first song at the age of 25. Mm-hmm. Okay. That seems right. Uh, you began using the name Big Dipper at the age of 26. Yes. And as of 2018, you're based in Los Angeles? Yes. Okay. Uh, you performed at Bear Festivals, P-Town, San Francisco's Bear Pride. And then you headlined uh, Capital Pride in 2019. Yeah. Okay. okay. So there are so many things missing from that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fill us in. <laughs> Fill us in. Yes. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> toured Australia. I played a bear event in Iceland. Okay. I played at wow. the Milkshake Festival in Amsterdam. Um, I have performed in Paris, uh, Toronto, Vancouver. 
uh, Edmonton, mm. up in Alberta, Canada, wow. and then like all over the states, so many different places. Now, um, the last line in the part of, uh, well, one of the last lines is, uh, and I read this yesterday, which is what I was telling you about. Uh, you started performing to combat hatred and to help people feel empowered. Why was that important? Why do you feel like? Well, it's interesting because none of that was ever the point. You know, like mm-hmm. when I when I first started, I didn't I didn't sit at home and go, um, "What can I do to make an impact <laughs> on other people?" It was more about my own shit like Mm -hmm. wanting to put myself out there wanting to push my own limits and Mm -hmm. i first started performing with two other people and we were in a dance trio called double dj um and we did sort of like sort of burlesque sort of just like kind of avant-garde and we would dance in stripper heels oh so we were like really doing some like gender fuck stuff and really sort of pushing this idea it was like three totally different body types we were all different ages you know like it was it was like a a a very everyone was different Mm -hmm. and and when i started dancing i would start stripping and showing off more of my body and i realized that there was a power in that Mm -hmm. like i would like rip my shirt off and people would actually like cheer and i used to be so self-conscious of Mm -hmm. the amount of body hair i had and and you know being chubby and 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 i just like that something flipped in me and I was like, Oh, I'm really confident in my brain. I know I'm smart. I know I'm capable. I know I'm a good performer, but the thing that would always hold me back was this sort of like fear of other people like making fun of me. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, like when I play like at mixed events, like, uh, um, a music festival Mm -hmm. or I'll play at a club that like, isn't necessarily like a bear event. Mm -hmm. I see people out in the crowd whispering to their girlfriend, yeah. you know, like sort of like looking at me quizzically, like, why did you strip down to a jock strap mm-hmm. and a harness? Like, like your body you doesn't look like the go-go boys yeah. who are also working at this club. And so obviously it like still happens, mm-hmm. but the amount of like positivity and like um, sort of like compliments and, and feedback I get mm-hmm. from people is so great that, it is really empowering and I can see that there is a positive effect yeah. on other people. Well, funny enough that you mentioned that, uh, I, I've gotten to a point, especially now with politics and just everything going on where in our communities, in all of these people who are, cause, cause it happens with uh, a lot of people who think they're forward thinking liberal and woke and all that stuff. They still go to these bars and they'll still make fun of people. Oh yeah. And it's just not, I, I don't think that it's helpful at all. I have no room for, I, I might catch myself saying negative things or, you know, quirk here and there laughing, but there's no room for that. I think right now, especially in the climate that we have. Right. And I think, I think it's complete human nature Mm -hmm. to like be with your friend see something that is like different or funny Mm -hmm. to you and go to your friend like oh my god she's you know like look at that shirt Mm -hmm. or like really with that haircut and and sometimes i find myself doing it towards the like more mainstream Mm -hmm. looking people or like you know like we all do it literally that's like how we work in the world the difference is when it's like you walk away from that interaction really truly believing that yeah. and then you take actual action in your life to be like discriminatory or hateful towards those people yes. like uh walking past someone in the club who has way too much cologne on and i go like Ugh, and make yeah. a comment to my friend like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that's fine that's not hateful like you're polluting my air <laughs> with like 14 sprays of whatever garbage you have on your body i'm a i'm a firm <laughs> believer of uh, you know, I, I enjoy comedy. I enjoy stuff. Yeah. I don't believe in hurting people's feelings. Right. So if you say something and nobody, nobody's the wiser, nobody gets hurt, you know, stuff, that's how situational comedy and stuff like that happens. Don't be l- legitimately rude. Like right. if you're looking out in the crowd and you see people whispering and you kind of get that feeling that they're, they, they have. I do, but also, like, I've also been doing this so long that I, I, I have definitely come to terms with the fact that I just go, like, well, yeah. how cool. They, mm-hmm. like, they're having a fun experience with their friend. Yeah. If that's at my expense, I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. I'm being paid to be here. Yeah. You okay. got pay, you paid, <laughs> you paid to, to come in. in. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, and I was like, and I know you're in the minority of this crowd yeah. who's, like, maybe not living for me and the rest of everyone is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I mean, like, 
I just clock it. Like at this point I can sort of see and it's just an interesting thing to keep in my brain when people talk to me about like, oh, you're so celebrated in these people. And I'm like, yeah, not everybody. Mm. And it's like we were talking about, you were saying that uh, some people were saying like, oh, he's been doing this for a while. Like, why isn't he bigger? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's because I'm gay and in my 30s, no major rate record label would ever touch me. Mm Like, uh, the, 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 like, gay musicians out there all sort of are young, are really have already become established songwriters for big name pop artists mm-hmm. so they can, like, pivot with their own fan base. Or they're, like, really young, like, Twinkie Boys, like a Troy Savon mm-hmm. or something like yes. that. And so, obviously, I think tides are changing, but, like, I'm realistic about the fact that, like, Capitol Records is not going to be like, we want to give you a deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? But are you, like, you've built this on your own, right? I've seen your your stuff gets a lot of views. Like, I I think that's amazing on Thank your you. own. like Yeah, no, it would be amazing. But to me, it's less about the label. Mm. I essentially run my own label. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I put out my own music. I put out, like, I can't even count it. This, probably five six seven projects Mm -hmm. like these different releases whether they're full albums or little remix releases i started putting out stuff on my website where you could just like download a zip folder like back in the dat piff ages (laughs) when you would like put your mixtape out there or on soundcloud and then you know i started releasing stuff like on streaming and itunes and you know i run my own record label what would be best actually for me is not to get signed to a record label, but to find an investor. I don't know. I mean, obviously like a label and like a team would be great. But at this Mm. point, like I'm not saying I know what the fuck I'm doing, but I've like worked with publicists and it's kind of gone well, but I can get more like posts and clicks and links and whatever the fuck a publicist is supposed Mm -hmm. to do. I can get more of that on my own. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just want, people to invest in what i'm doing so we can put it out to larger you know like with my with my last album what i realized i should have spent all my money on was paid advertising oh yeah because people just like had no idea and i think if the majority of the people who sort of know of me or knew who i was knew that i had to put an album out Mm -hmm. the like the response would have been bigger and it, it's mostly about like, oh, I've only ever grown organically. Like the views yeah. on YouTube are only because I put the video out and people share yeah. it. It's not because, and I have, I have videos that have like 600, 700,000 views, 800,000 views mm-hmm. and videos that have 12,000 views yeah. that are like equally as the same quality. Yeah. And like, I'm like, this song is actually better, but it has less views. Now, how, when it comes to your music videos, you're, I, I assume you're, you have creative control. You no, I just close my eyes and let yeah. people do it. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm, I mean, like, I don't have, like, directing credit on every video because mm-hmm. I kind of feel like it's implied. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I knew who was running the show. <laughs> but, yeah, I work with really great directors and mm-hmm. friends and collaborators. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, it's interesting. I've moved out to L.A. and I've met a lot of YouTubers and mm-hmm. drag queens that I work with and people who sort of put stuff together really quickly. Mm-hmm. And I have found that, like, that does not agree with me. Like, there are people who will be, like, sitting here and be like, oh, this is a great idea for a song. I'll book a studio for tonight. They'll write the song. They'll be like, get me a mix at least by Thursday. And then they get on their phone and they call all their friends and get the thing. They're shooting a video to, like, the rough mix on a Thursday. And then it gets mastered over the weekend. And then it's out Tuesday. (laughs) And I'm like, what? Yeah, that's a lot. Because I literally will spend two months planning a video. Because I'm basically shooting a video, $150,000, $250,000 video yeah. for three grand and a bunch of favors. Yeah, it looks... So I spend yeah. all my time planning and I go like, it should be this kind of location, but you can give me that lo- location for free? Then mm-hmm. we're changing the vision yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's worth it. Mm-hmm. So I spend all this time doing it and then I take another four or five months before I put it out because mm-hmm. I'm trying to get the edit right. And again, everyone's working for favors. So yeah. I'm like, oh, you have your full-time job? I guess we'll edit it in two weeks. Yeah. You, you talk about uh, growing up a little bit. And mm-hmm. like, what was it like? Uh, I'm sure we all have stories from high school and being different and stuff, but um, you don't look like the typical gay person or the person that everybody would assume, you know, like... You know, you don't have like 
chiseled perfect everything that the, that mainstream media portrays or like porn portrays gay people to be and what i find more is you know there's bear studios there's black studios there's latin studios there's so much now what was it like growing up without having all of that which we have now uh in out there yeah well okay so that's that's like really interesting I always use the example of like in sitcoms, the punchline of like, mm-hmm. oh, I went on a blind date and it was bad. And they were like, what was wrong? And they were like, he had back hair. Mm. And it's like a punchline. Everyone's like, grow, you know, mm. and it's like, my back is covered in hair, mm. you know? So I, it, because, and, and when I was coming up, it was like middle school was when the original Queer Eye was on TV mm-hmm. and like, all of those, none of those guys sort of looked anything like I was growing up to look like, or like what I knew my dad looked like, which I'm yeah. sort of just turning into. Uh, and so, but I used to, I'm trying to remember the name of the website, but the kind of shit I used to look at, I never looked at videos until college. Mm-hmm. And that was only when I like learned about LimeWire and started downloading videos. But I used to look at fucking like, college humor when they had a section on their website where it was like frat boys pantsing each other or like if they're passed out they're gonna like pull like strip mm. them and like draw on their draw face dicks on their head and stuff. yeah or they'd like it would be like a bunch of guys like peeing into a bucket and i'd be like looking at all their dicks and i found myself like really idolizing that like frat boy like lacrosse player mm-hmm. sort of like traditional straight boy college dude body type and it caused a lot of like internal turmoil because i remembered thinking well there's no way even if they were gay that i would ever have an opportunity and the other thing is do you remember that website amateur straight guys.com yes. okay ASG. so those dudes where are they now mm. someone needs to do a documentary about them yeah. so after, after porn ends but those dudes would always get these like bro straight guys mm-hmm. you know who are all like go-go boys hustlers and porn actors yeah. pretending to be straight and they would get them to like come over and i would i'm so gullible i would believe it and they one of them was like a little heavier than the other they both had like facial hair you could mm-hmm. tell they had body hair And it also, like, spawned this thing in my brain that, like, oh, well, I could always pay people to let me suck them off. Mm. And, you know, now as an adult, I'm like, yeah, you can hire people to have sex with or you can have sex for free or you can go to a party or you can meet a boyfriend. Like, there are plenty of ways to have sex with people. But, you know, as a 17-year-old and 18-year-old, like, surfing the Internet, I was like, Oh, well, I'm not the kind of body type that any of those people that I think are attractive, but I could always just pay for sex. Mm. And if that's the only way you can think you'll be desirable to someone, that can do like a little bit of internal damage. So then how does it feel now um, in like 2010 and beyond all of these guys like really just embracing beards and embracing all their hair and... And smell. Sometimes guys like really just want to go all natural, and and it's it's interesting. Like, yeah, how how does it? Because you wouldn't see that even if guys were hairy back then too. They would shave everything. Yeah, or they would like they would shave their back, yeah. but like only trim, and they would trim, and they would do whatever. Like I've never. The only time I shaved anything was when my friend Willem uh, shaved the word "cunt" into my back <laughs> for a photograph. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's really, it, it's definitely a fascinating sort of journey mm-hmm. to think about because, um, I think I'd like learned what a bear was as I was like graduating college. And then I, I think the first time I went to like a bear event, I had like a lot of people come up to me and say like, oh, well, when you think of the word bear, you're what we think of. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> I've somehow ad- like found myself in a community yeah. where like, I'm the poster child mm. for the community. <laughs> um, which has been, you know, fun and empowering and mm. exciting and, uh, definitely confidence boosting, but I'm 34 and I, you know, my last album was called late bloomer. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always considered myself a late bloomer. I lost my virginity really mm. late in life. Like, I just 
I feel like now I'm like, oh, I get it. Mm. Like, I can fuck whoever I want to fuck so long as they want to fuck me because, like, I am sexy and I am desirable. Mm -hmm. And not having that for, like, I don't know, half of the time I've been alive with a sex drive (laughs) is sort of, like, fucked up, you know? So I think it's cool that there's now a place where, like, you know, everything is interesting. So are you are you well versed in uh, bear lingo now? Because bear lingo. Well, I just I just found out that, and from a straight girl too. This is my favorite part. She went to Provincetown during Bear Week. Okay, and she found out. Uh, she told me uh, grizzly bears, uh, panda bears. Um, well, panda bear is just racist. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. Well, is it okay? So it's because they're Asians, right? And Correct. Bears. And then. And because typically Asian men have less body hair. Oh, okay. That, okay. Now polar okay. bears are dudes who whose hair has gone white. Okay. Like black or, bears. Black bears. It's okay. just so dumb. That's the whole animal thing is so stupid. She she went there and she was curious, and this is how a bear described it to her. I think it's because. So I think I think the term bear mm. could be any term, but. It works because of, like, you know, body hair. Mm -hmm. And at this point, bear events have become so sort of in vogue. And, like, these party, there's these, like, national, international party brands, like Mm -hmm. Barracuda. You know, like, where where you know, for the most part, the type of person who's going to be there. Mm -hmm. But when you go to these events, it's not all bears but it's people who feel more comfortable there than they do going to like a bar in west hollywood yeah or a circuit party in house kitchen totally and so then the labeling within within it is wild i mean otters wolves silver foxes twonks ferrets i the the word twonk is so funny to me (laughs) well i don't even know what it means a twink who was now they're a twonk okay well an aging twink is a twonk that's perfect. <laughs> I asked one of my uh, my porn star friends, what the, what happens to a twink after the age of 30? Twunk. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. When you go to porn, what's your go-to right now? Um, I often look up daddies. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Xtube, but I feel like it's shitty now. Yeah. I, I used to look at Xtube all the time, and now I think it's pivoted... Like the focus is less about like the banner ads and the website making money and much more about the individual person posting videos, Mm -hmm. charging for the videos. And so it becomes more of like a, like if you spend time on there, you're like 30 bucks deep and you're like, wait, what happened? Like, (laughs) you know, I'd rather just subscribe to someone and look at their videos on a regular basis than like, you just keep like renting videos yeah, and you're like, you're where right. all the, you know, where the other videos go, the, all the free videos that were like five to 10 minutes or right. Minutes. And yeah. I'm like, I know everyone's, you know, making some money here, mm-hmm. like these advertisements, mm-hmm. the website, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh, this is strange. So, um, yeah, I use Pornhub or X2, but I, I typically do not like produced videos. Okay. The problem with that is I think it gets into like a really gray area. Mm-hmm. Cause like, I like to watch videos of like, people having someone over to their house like a hookup Mm -hmm. and like you never quite know if people are acting or not Mm -hmm. and you literally never quite know like if both people know they're being filmed oh okay that's hot you know like yeah like uh, like, oh the phone is on the mantle and i'm getting you know fucked by my neighbor and And like i said i'm gullible so if the description says like my neighbor was loading groceries i went outside (laughs) with no underwear on in my sweatpants and got him to come over and fuck me i'm like i believe it i'm like that's the fantasy and they do that thing where they kind of look at the camera right (laughs) and then you're like meanwhile both of them work at the same club yeah dancers they like set the thing up and they like split the money or whatever it is (laughs) so i'm into that fantasy but i like watching regular people have sex okay it's just more interesting Mm -hmm. it's more interesting when there are no cuts it's more interesting when there are no music when Mm -hmm. there's no music it's more interesting when people look like regular people to me and they're not performing like you're not going to like if you saw them out and you talk to them they just walk by you right it it would be that's the kind of porn you get with studio porn yeah I remember watching a, a porn on Xtube or a video on Xtube. Some guy was filming himself while he was sucking this guy's dick. And then the guy pulled out and shot a load of cum all over his face. And then 
the guy holding the camera just said, thank you, stood up, walked out, and then the three minutes for the rest of the video were him walking home oh, out on the street with just a fucking face full of cum. That's amazing. And I was like, this is a great video. Yeah. <laughs> it's real? Yeah. <laughs> We're in New Orleans at the moment. We're at Southern Decadence. I don't think I mentioned that before. Oh, yeah. But um, you this just... It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this view. The brick wall. No, I, I love this brick wall, though. Um, okay. You did an event yesterday at the uh-huh. Eagle. Yeah, here. I performed. And then uh, what's next? Because you're... Um, well, I kind of always have gigs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say that in my life I'm on perma tour. So uh, a couple exciting gigs coming up. Uh, I'm going to be in Louisville uh in september for the derby city bears event Mm -hmm. uh they do like a bear pageant i think i think they like to call it a contest it's a pageant uh (laughs) they do a bear pageant and i'm going to be performing at it as like a special guest and then um bear world magazine hosts a bear weekend in key west at the end of october and so i'm going to be down there doing like a like a VIP event and then a, a performance and a, something. I'll be there the whole weekend. Cool. And then I have a new EP called the Ham and Cheese EP that uh, is done. And it's going to come out whenever I shoot music videos for it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely looking forward to watching a lot of your videos. Cool. Listening to your music. Uh, I'm very, very happy that I was able to find you. And uh, I'll just put the word out. Like, yeah, thanks. Yeah, and get it out there. Yeah, it's, it, you know, the internet's a crazy thing because yeah. I started putting videos out. I say 2012 because the first video I put out was December of 2011. You know, it was yeah. like three weeks yeah, yeah, before yeah. the new year. So I've been on the internet, you know, at this point for seven solid years. And um, some of the early stuff is embarrassing to me. But you just it's, live with it. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, you go like, okay. And you, you evolve. And it's the new. To... Did you, have you seen, uh, have you watched Euphoria on HBO? No. Okay. It's that new show with Zendaya about the kids. Oh, I've heard of it. But, but I, the kids are crazy. It makes yeah. you want to not have kids. I mean, I don't want to have kids. But these kids at 15 are like, you know, Molly Percocet, <laughs> the whole thing, yeah. flipping their parents' house upside down, <laughs> blackmailing people, yeah. hooking up, you know, the whole day. I was like, ugh. Like I literally yeah. did not lose my virginity miles away from nine till I was twenty two yeah. <laughs> and like stayed at home and rented movies. Yeah. Like I was not Jeez. doing that shit. Okay. But anyhow, there's this whole conversation about nudes because at this point, I mean, and obviously at this you know table, no one really cares about nudes. Yeah. But at this point, like in ten years, every will one will have taken a nude picture and it'll mm-hmm. be like. You know, the whole Anthony Weiner scandal, mm. like when his dick got out there, everyone was like, <gasps> and I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. Like if, if a senator who I like their policy also like is out here on Tinder and yeah. like sending nudes, I'm like, that's fine. Still vote for you, ma'am. Yeah. Like it's an interesting thing that we live in this place where like my art, I'm like, this is what it is. Mm-hmm. The pictures that exist. I'm like, this is, you know, like I, we've grown up with yeah. the internet. We're in like a new generation. And like that stuff is just going to sort of be there mm-hmm. and you can't police it. So some of the mm-hmm. old stuff is funny. I'm like getting the reins. I'm trying to figure out who I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I definitely was like a performer being a character for the first couple of years. And then I was like, whatever, I'm mm-hmm. just going to be myself. And it wasn't like a huge shift, but mm-hmm. like I used to like play the role of a rapper rather than just be myself. Be yourself, and yeah. this is how I make music. And so now I'm sort of in a much more like authentic place as a, an artist. Sweet. Okay. I absolutely appreciate you being here. Um, thank you so much to my special guest, Big Dipper, not the Big Dipper, Big Dipper. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you can find me on Instagram at Big Dipper Jelly. So do that. Yeah. <laughs> You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Telegram. If you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn, where you can help this YouTube channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers. (laughs) 